The next speaker is Chandramouli Madhavan. Chandramouli Madhavan leads a site reliability team at Google Bangalore. He has worked at Google Bangalore for the past eight years in a variety of engineering roles on multiple products such as Google uh, Transliteration, Google News, and Google AdWords. Let's welcome uh, Chandramouli. Can you hear me? Yeah, is it on? Okay. Uh, thank you to the organizers for inviting me here. Uh, I'm Chandramali Madhavan. I uh, work in the site reliability engineering team here at uh, Google Bangalore. And I'll be talking about analyzing terabytes of data with Google BigQuery. Uh, before I start, uh, just want to get an estimate of uh, what uh, the audience understands by the meaning of big data. How many of you think a million rows is big data? Okay. Uh, what about basically 10 million rows? Do you think that is big data from your, from the kind of applications you looked at? Not many hands. I'm assuming you still think it is not too big. Uh, what about 100 million rows? Uh, so yeah, looks like, yeah, that's somewhere close to where we are, like some of the like sweet areas for like big data processing. Uh, what about 500 million rows? Yeah, that sounds like big data, and that's sort of the sweet spot for a product like Google BigQuery, uh, sort of billions of rows, uh, hundreds of millions of rows, uh, and we, we'll see how uh, BigQuery can aid us to do interla interactive analytical processing on uh, these billions of rows. Or should I just stand here? And no, it's not because of this. Oh, okay. Even here it didn't work. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, so when we talk of big data, uh, we deal with a large amount of big data at Google. Uh, every minute we get 60 hours of video uploaded. Uh, we have hundreds of millions of gigabytes uh, in our search index. Uh, at the last count, this is the old number, we had 425 million users uh, in Gmail. And 
all of these systems generate a large amount of data, uh, whether it be logs, it could be server data, uh, and data based on user interactions on these different products, and uh, we need to analyze them. And a lot, lot of times we really do not know what kind of analysis we want to do. Uh, the analysis could be fairly ad hoc. Uh, so we need a system uh, which, which is good at doing ad hoc analysis and can do it uh, basically uh, at scale uh, reliably uh, and in an interactive manner. So BigQuery gives you this power. You, you can store your data with the reliability, redundancy, and consistency, and go from data to meaning at scale very quickly. Uh, so, so BigQuery is an externalization of uh, something called Dremel. Uh, there is a paper on Dremel for those who are interested, and they, they can read the paper. But it's an externalization of the Dremel product. And so we use the same tools which we have externalized uh, and internally on these large amounts of data. Uh, so s some of the ways developers are using it, uh, we have uh, developers using it for game and social media analytics. Uh, internally in Google, it's heavily used for infrastructure monitoring. Uh, so for example, finding uh, servers which take a long amount of time for certain RPCs. Uh, that, that would be a use case, or finding the top installed apps from a particular uh, marketplace product. Uh, campaign optimization, uh, sensor data analysis was a demonstration which uh, we put out during Google I.O., uh, which, where we collected a lot of data from sensors uh, and uh, put up a whole system which showed the power of BigQuery. So the agenda today is to show the power uh, I'll just show you how to load your data, uh, how to run your queries, and the underlying architecture and design. So let's dive in. So this is how BigQuery looks. Uh, I hope uh, the network is not flaky. Uh, so. so, so this is how. Uh, so I just want to show how to load our data. This is some, uh, I was looking around, around for some good uh, data set uh, to load. And on data.gov.in, I found some water quality data, uh, so which I've already loaded, but I just want to show how to load it. Uh, so, So I'm just going to give it, the data set is a set of tables. I'm just going to give a new table name. This, this will contain the same data which those other tables contain. Uh, then the way we load data is through uh, files which contain comma separated values. Uh, so I'm going to choose a file for this. And the next thing is to specify the schema. Uh, now the schema is just a set of name values uh, where the values, uh, name colon values, and uh, this is the format in which the data is present. Uh, so you, I have the state name, uh, which is, and all of these types I've just created as string. So I have the state, district, uh, block, and so on. Uh, then I, I want to skip some header rows. I have a single row, which is the header row, and I'm going to skip that header row. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. I, I can choose the field delimiter, which in this case is just a comma. And so this table, uh, the job will be created for importing this data. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll just show you the power of BigQuery with some sample queries on the pre-imported data.
So, I, I can just do a select on this table uh, to get some data from this table. So, if you can see the schema of this table, it has state, it has a block name, village name and uh, a bunch of quality parameters. So, I have some pre-created queries. So, I, I am trying to get the top 10 states. Uh, so, top is a statistical function with high quality implemented uh, in Dremel which we have externalized uh, which can get the top 10 uh, rows uh, from a particular query with, and I am doing a regular expression match on a particular column. So, I, I'm looking at the quality parameter FL for uh, fluoride. It's taking uh, longer than it should really. Uh, I don't know. Because, uh, the table has just probably 100,000 rows. So, there. Uh, so, so you can see these are the list of states uh, where we have uh, water uh, quality problems uh, where because of fluoride and these are the different counts for it. So, we just saw how to load your data. One, one thing uh, different about BigQuery is that uh, typically you advise to have uh, normalized data so that you don't have uh, redundant data. So, this is the way your typical table would have looked uh, for a birth record database uh, where you had IDs uh, for, for parents and uh, you had a separate table for parents, uh, but this is not the typical way you, you would create your data for BigQuery. Uh, what we advise you is to denormalize your data. Uh, we will come later to when we look at the implementation, uh, why it is good to denormalize. So, this is the way you, you would have a data format. Uh, so, the actually the uh, data for both the father and mother uh, will be loaded up as part of the same table which contains the birth record of the child. And as we saw, uh, CSV comma separated values is your format. Uh, so, this this the way I showed you of uh, loading data is through the UI, uh, but that is really for small data sizes. For large data sizes what we advise you to do is to use Google Cloud Storage. Uh, so, you can store your blobs in Google Cloud Storage uh, and then like instead of the file which I showed you, uh, you can refer to the blob uh, uh, to the object in Google Cloud Storage to be imported into BigQuery. Uh, running your queries, we have a bunch of libraries available uh, in Java, Python, .NET, PHP, JavaScript, AppScript and so on uh, for running your queries. Uh, there is a REST API, so you can like uh, call into BigQuery using the REST API from your applications. Uh, now, some intuition about uh, BigQuery big architecture and uh, how to look at BigQuery. Uh, so, the typical relational database uh, architecture will look something like this. Uh, so, you have different B tree nodes uh, and uh, you have a large number of uh, key ranges which each node encompasses and uh, there is some disk storage where the actual data is present. Uh, so, when you want to look for a particular record, you will traverse this B tree which is typically flat and uh, try to locate the actual record. Uh, while, uh, so typically in this architecture doing a table scan is really expensive, uh, but BigQuery is something which really is embraces a table scan. Uh, so, Typically, the sort of folklore is if you do a table scan or a ter one terabyte table, 
you are going to have a really bad time. Uh, but our goal is to perform a one terabyte table scan in one second. Uh, looking at the current kind of hardware, this would require uh, reading a terabyte per, per second from disk would require around 10,000 disks. Uh, processing one terabyte per second maybe requires 5,000 processors. And this is the kind of scale which we have internally at Google, uh, which is externalized through uh, BigQuery. Uh, one other big difference is to store your data, uh, we do not store it in a record oriented format. Uh, we are storing the data in, in a column oriented fashion. So the column oriented fashion A allows us to load only the columns of interest. Uh, so we are not loading the data for columns which do not matter. So, so something like a select star will not be available in BigQuery. Uh, but typically for most analytical queries, uh, you will be filtering on a, a set of columns. Uh, you will be, and uh, you will also maybe select a subset of columns. Uh, your tables will have a very, very large number of columns, uh, but really you do not need to load all the columns. Uh, so we will exactly read the set of columns which we require to process your query. And so as you are charged at the rate based on the number of gigabytes which are processed, uh, so, uh, basically loading the columns of interest A is efficient and from a latency perspective for an interactive tool uh, is something uh, much faster than reading all the data. So, this gives a big order of magnitude efficiency gain uh, for us when we look at very, very large data sets. Uh, so, another thing is this, uh, the late Jim Gray had this famous sort of quote saying, bring computation to the data rather than data to the computation. Uh, so the whole BigQuery architecture is about how do you move the compute as close to the data as possible. So this is a form of BigQuery architecture which uh, you can look at. So there are different nodes. So you have uh, mixers at various levels and uh, different shards at the leaf levels. Uh, these are still computation nodes at each level. Uh, so, uh, what you can look at as a, from a MapReduce world, maybe you can look at each leaf level shard as your mapper and the mixers at the higher level mixers as maybe the reducers. Uh, but, uh, so, and then you have some distributed storage, something like uh, HDFS, Google file system, any of these. Uh, if you want to find a value, the difference from the previous slide where we looked at the traditional database is I'm only traversing a particular set of nodes in the tree and uh, but in the case of BigQuery, that's not what you'll do. You will be, every shard will be reading its set of data, doing a table scan and uh, basically selecting the row and only a certain set of shards basically will have the rows of interest. Uh, so some examples, uh, so s some of these queries you can obviously do in traditional databases and they'll be equally fast. So select count uh, or uh, which might be just a metadata operation in a traditional database or max where you just maybe have to go on the rightmost uh, arc uh, edge of, of the B tree. But something like standard deviation, uh, if you want to do this at scale, uh, you have an online algorithm where you need to keep track of the sums uh, of the set, sum of the elements at the leaf and the sum of squares of the elements and using that, we can parallelize this even though our data is split up amongst the leaves. Another thing which you would almost never do in a traditional database is to do a regex match on each and every row. Uh, so you can do a regular expression match on each and every row. So since we are doing a scan, uh, we are able to actually do a computation on each and every row and select uh, a subset of rows which match your interest. Uh, similarly, nested selects. Uh, these are 
also like things which you can do here uh, which and will still be very efficient. Uh, joints, we support joints, both large and small joints. Uh, the way joints work, uh, for small joints, uh, I think the next figure will tell you how the small, small joints work. We actually uh, move the small table to each and every compute node in the, in the tree. Uh, and basically the join is done at each level of the hierarchy. So, we, we allow uh, you to do a small join if the right hand side table is uh, less than 8 MB of compressed data. Uh, so, you, you can do a small join in that case. Uh, there is a large join uh, and that would work by partitioning the tables and work on all compute nodes. Uh, so, the, the syntax is join versus join each. Uh, so, between so, depending on your use case, you can use either a small join or a large join. Uh, so, I will go to the demo, I will try to give some demonstration of some queries here. So, this is a I do not know if you let me just can everyone see this? So, this is a Wikipedia page view data set which we have. Uh, it has hundreds of millions of rows uh, and I am sele selecting uh, the title and sum of page views uh, for these uh, particular titles uh, for, for the English language where the title matches a particular regex and then I am grouping by title and ordering by view count. Uh, so, let us run this query. So, this is processing uh, hundreds of at least uh, I had just run this query sometime earlier maybe I can show that here. So, this ran in uh, 5 seconds and it processed around 37 gigabytes of data. Uh, so, so you can see the set of results here hopefully by the time we go back it should have it's still running. Not very sure. So, one thing is uh, some of this is, is part of the general freebie quota. So, uh, sometimes it is a bit slower. Okay, yeah, why? So, so you can see uh, the set of queries, the set of view counts, okay. So, I want to discuss uh, so these are some limitations uh, of of bigquery. Uh, so if you have a very large table, uh, sometimes you will see this response too large. Uh, if you really need all the data, uh, you should really be sending it to a destination table. Uh, you typically would not want terabytes of data, but be careful then uh, in putting a limit clause if you just want to examine a few rows in the query. Uh, we allow very, very large responses. Uh, if, you, if you can like send your data to a destination table. Uh, another thing which you could use uh, when, the, when you use a group by clause, uh, some of the intermediate nodes will get a large amount of data. Uh, so, one way of avoiding problems with this is to select do a sampling of the rows. So, you can uh, use uh, we have a hash function which is highly collision resistant. Uh, you can use something like hash of user id percent 10 is 0 uh, to sample the rows 
rather than processing each and every row on the table. Uh, and then multiplying by the appropriate factor to get an approximation. Uh, this is something you do a lot of times in uh, which is to group by a certain like a key and then order by. Uh, so, if you want to find say the unique users, uh, the top k users uh, for who did some particular action, uh, what you can do is use this top command as I stated earlier, it is it's highly efficient and statistically very, very accurate. Uh, this will get you a, a very good value and at a much cheaper cost than uh, doing, uh, uh, trying to do a group by which, which might give errors uh, with uh, a response too large. So, I think I'll just skip this. So, this is one question uh, some of you might have: Why not map reduce? Uh, so, typically in map reduce, uh, you have a controller, you have a bunch of workers uh, which are doing the map, and uh, you are going to shard your data to to parallelize the execution. Uh, so, so map. So, first you have to do the map. Uh, data has to be then uh, you you do reduce after that to combine the data together. Uh, but between these, there is one big phase which is fairly expensive, which is the shuffle. Uh, so the shuffle means you have to move data around, and uh, that means you produce data on intermediate uh, output on disk and move it around to the correct reducer. Also, in many cases, you might require multiple passes over your data. So, it is not very well suited for uh, interactive analysis. Uh, so, for interactive analysis, so something like BigQuery uh, will get you your uh, response in a matter of seconds. Uh, so, in summary, uh, we saw what is big data, uh, how BigQuery is different from MapReduce. Uh, and BigQuery is really very good for ad hoc processing of uh, large amounts of data uh, and also gave you a little bit of introduction how, is how to think about what happens when you execute queries on BigQuery. Uh, I'll open it up for questions now. Are there any numbers that you can share uh, using BigQuery versus MapReduce versus a traditional uh, old I mean, database where you say, okay, for this much amount of data, uh, this is the time taken by BigQuery and so on and so forth? So, meaning I don't have comparative numbers, mm -hmm. but uh, just uh, if you look at the Wikipedia example uh, where some of these tables had 400 million rows, uh, we could uh, process it in like 30 seconds, uh, which is like fairly like 50 gigabytes of data. So, obviously, if you do sufficient parallelization, uh, you, you could maybe do it in a reasonably fast time, but imagine a system where basically you have it uh, in a very interactive fashion, uh, you do not have to do any, the data is pre-processed in this case, uh, and it is available at these nodes for continuous analysis. So, in the map reduce, just bringing up your jobs, uh, setting up the whole framework will, will take, the setup will take time. So, it, it is going to be much, meaning if you are ready to wait for 10 minutes, uh, then map reduce will probably work fine for some of these cases. Uh, but if you want it, uh, like some of the use cases is typically product managers will have workbooks uh, where uh, there are very good Excel connectors and also Google Docs spreadsheet as app script. Uh, from app script, you can query into BigQuery, and you combining them, uh, you get very good mashups, which in real time, these workbooks can get updated. Yeah. Thank you. Hello? Hello? Uh, yeah. What is the pricing model? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Uh, what is the pricing model? So, so there is a nominal uh, price for storing your data in Google Cloud Storage, uh, and then uh, I, I don't have the exact numbers, but you are priced on the amount of data which is 
read for each query. So based on the columns uh, of in your select and the columns in your where clauses, uh, basically based on the terabytes of or gigabytes of data which are like processed for that query, uh, there is a charge based on that. Do you support uh, medians or percentiles? Yes, percentiles, uh, the quantiles is there. Uh, yeah, quantiles is there. I think median should be there. Yeah. I have a question here. Yeah. Um, Go on. Um, my question was uh, related to, um, you know, your write costs. So uh, do you compress the data like some of the column stores do? Uh, and uh, you know store them um, that way um, and then when you access them um, um, do you kind of have some kind of query optimization inside of uh, uh, BigQuery uh, where you know uh, based on the where class based on what is indexed um, you know you can kind of reduce the amount of IO you need to do um, yeah. when, you, when you sift through the data. So uh, as stated earlier so we are storing data in a column oriented fashion so in, in lots of columns where the number of unique values is small, uh, those columns are highly compressible and we, so that is really compressed and uh, we will only be loading up the columns which are required for first selecting the rows uh, for your scan and uh, doing the compute on those columns and then selecting any other columns for those rows uh, which, which are need to be returned to the user as part of the select. What I meant was, uh, suppose you have a long where, right? Um, so, uh, do you have a query optimizer which decides, you know, this is how I need to execute my where clause so that, you know, I can um, probably reduce the amount of subsequent data that I need to do in my group buys so that, uh, you know, the amount of data I need to fetch from my disk yes. can be reduced. So, do you have any kind of query optimizer you do or you just do a, a blind where clause execution? Uh. I'm not familiar with the implementation details, but we surely have some query optimizers, but uh, I can't answer exactly what exactly we do. Yeah. Okay. Let's imagine I'm going to actually show a page of the top sellers or some top results. And uh, let's say I use limit so that the query is faster. Now, obviously, I can go and limit for 100 and so show 10 by 10 and 10, right? But then most of the people, let's say, they don't go beyond the first two pages. I'm going to be more expensive, limiting to 100. Uh, do you have a yield kind of logic where I can just do 10 and then again I ask you again and then you oh, yield yeah. if required? Uh, I, I don't think we have any pagination support right now. That's pretty much what you want, right? Right. Uh, so you, it will be a fresh query. Uh, there are cached queries and uh, so you can use cached results, but uh, you you will have to, yeah. Okay. Do you think it will be part of the plan in the roadmap? Uh, I'm not aware. Uh, okay. Thanks. Uh, hi. Uh, I have a question regarding uh, uh, which is used for storing the data. It is in, in the form of some table. Uh, so if Could you just, I can't get you. Hello. Yeah. Uh, my question is regarding uh, uh, column store, which you are using for uh, storing the data. So, is there any uh, performance implications uh, when you increase the number of column families um, in a, in a single table for storing the data? So, for example, if you have uh, some uh, more than five, six column families. Uh, so no, uh, meaning uh, we have customers having tables with thousands of columns. Uh, so column families, uh, no, not, not columns. Yes. Column families. Uh, what do you mean by column family? Here? Because uh, uh, like, uh, 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 for example, I, I just used HBase, for example. So there, we have uh, um, uh, multiple column family, and each column family have multiple column columns in that for the each row. So uh, here, uh, meaning you just have columns. We okay. don't have. Uh, uh, so. That's more similar to the big table kind of world. Yeah. So, yeah. so here it's uh, columns and if you want uh, sort of mimic column families, you'll have to store maybe a protocol buffer in okay. that particular column, but 
uh, you access it as a homogeneous unit, yeah. But you may not get the compression which you expect if you store it like a protocol. Buffer. Okay, yeah. thank you. Hello. Uh, hi. This side. Uh, uh, is it uh, Bicker is designed to support real time data? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Bicker is, sub, uh, is supposed to work with uh, real time data or with uh, static data? So, uh, yeah, great question. So, uh, so, the way we allow 1000 sort of appends per day on a table, so which roughly you can say maybe you can do a 40 an hour kind of thing. Uh, so, you will have to batch your data. So, typically what you have seen customers is maybe break their sort of uh, real time, sort of near real time data as like maybe hourly or like uh, maybe every 15 minute intervals and sort of create like an append every so often. Uh, but if you want something like sub second like keep on appending to a particular table, that won't be possible. That is not, is it supported? No, yeah, that supported. is not supported. But uh, you, you will have to batch it up. Uh, so, it is near real time, but not like, meaning if you want like sub second, like every second you are sending some few log records or that won't be, that's not supported. So, is there any Google products which uses this BigQuery? Any Google products like any Google products which uses BigQuery? So, as I said, internally we have something called Dremel, uh, which uh -huh. is used heavily for all our log processing. Uh, so, uh, that's it's one of the most heavily used tools internally. Okay. okay. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, my question is like uh, in the beginning of the presentation, you mentioned that it's advisable that uh, we denormalize our data and then import in, in the BigQuery. But is the onus always on the client to denormalize the data or the BigQuery import framework supports, you know, mentioning this is stable, this to be? No, you, you will have to sort of like in your whatever ETL framework or whatever you use, uh, denormalize the data and like, yeah, load it up. Okay, and uh, my second question is uh, regarding, you know, type uh, usage. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. yeah, so uh, is it open for trial yeah, like yeah. for free? So what I showed you, bigquery.cloud.google.com, uh, all of you can go and play around with queries. There's a set of sample data sets. Unfortunately, uh, it was a bit slower, so I couldn't show you more queries, but uh, you can just go and play around. Uh, I think the first 100 megabytes is free, uh, so of processing. Uh, so you can uh, just go and like even load your own data sets and try it out. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. Uh, one question maybe here. Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, what I wanted to know was more related to the uh, strategic vision of uh, Dremel if you are BigQuery, if you uh, would have an idea. Are you? I, I, I'm sort here, of here, lost here. in the Back, back, straight. Back, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, that's okay. So, uh, basically what I wanted to know was, uh, is, is, uh, is joins across big tables a part in Dremel's vision, is it actually competing with, how is it position, uh, positioning itself? Is it an alternative to the MPP databases that are there? Or will it continue to stick with what it does well? Uh, so, so, what, uh, whatever, so for example, uh, large tables, table joins are one example. Yeah. Uh, do you see that happening in Dremel? Would you have any uh, idea on it? So, we have customers who join very, very large tables. It's already av available in uh, BigQuery. Okay. So, uh, and the response times are as, as fast as... So, it know. might take, say, instead of this, uh, like, less than a minute, maybe, like, 10 minutes for two very large tables. Uh, so, but basically, you will, uh, it is still very interactive and something you can, like, uh, depend on. Yeah. One last question. Yeah, go ahead. Are there any use cases uh, which uh, we can do using HDFS and MapReduce, but not using BigQuery? Uh, so, basically, uh, if if your data is like, if you are going to do a lot of multi-stage combining stuff, so if you are not willing to sort of denormalize de and put your data together, so let's say it's deeply nested series of joins, uh, and basically, uh, there are like 10 tables or something. Maybe a multi-stage map produce will work better in that case. So, 
so that, that those are some cases where map produce. So if you're wait, willing to wait uh, for a few hours for your processing, uh, map produce would uh, sort of work pretty fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you have any more questions, please take questions offline. Thanks, Chandra Mali. Thank you very much. Uh, a small announcement. Uh, we have a tangent sticker, uh, a 